Good evening, and welcome to tonight's forum. Uh, on Tuesday, November 6th, as way of introduction, uh, voters in Northampton, as well as taking part in national and regional elections, uh, will take part in a special municipal election where they have the option of approving a new city charter or constitution. Uh, the proposed charter has already been approved by the Northampton City Council, uh, the state legislature, and the governor, uh, but must still be ratified by the Northampton voters uh, in order to take effect. Uh, tonight, we're going to discuss some of the key changes and theory behind the new charter with a panel of citizens uh, who are part of the drafting committee of this new charter, as well as hopefully have the uh, opportunity for uh, questions, comments, and discussion with members of the audience. And my name is Scott Mahar. I'm a history teacher at Northampton High School. I've been there for 10 years, and I'll be the moderator for tonight's forum. Uh, joining me in discussing the new charter are members, are members of the Special Act Charter Drafting Committee, which created the charter. Uh, they are David Stevens, Megan Murphy, Gail Perlman, Todd Thompson, uh, Madeline Weaver Blanchett, and Bill Schur will arrive momentarily. Uh, for background, before I begin, reading from the Special Act Charter Drafting Committee uh, Executive Summary, just to, to, to explain why this new charter was written so we have a, a, a base of operations here. Uh, the primary objective, in their words, was to modernize our 129-year-old charter into a streamlined and flexible governing document. Uh, the current charter, again, in their words, is filled with archaic language and patchwork amendments that make the overall document difficult to follow and often contradictory. Um, other objectives were to improve the function of government, uh, increase autonomy of the separate branches of government, and facilitate broader public participation in the process. Uh, so as well as streamline and modernize, it includes some changes to city government, which we'll discuss tonight, hopefully. Uh, to begin with, we're going to uh, begin a discussion with the Charter Committee, highlighting some of the proposed changes and reasoning behind them, uh, and give some background information. Then we'll open it up to uh, public comment, questions, discussion, some back and forth. Uh, and, and if you do ask, if you have a question to ask, um, we ask you keep it uh, one point at a time. If you have more than one question, you're more than welcome to go up several times if you need to. Um, limit it to hopefully five minutes at a time. Uh, make your comment, ask a question, and, and the panel will, will hopefully be able to answer or, or give you the theory behind uh, the charter. Um, I'm going to start by uh, asking, I guess, David Stevens to give us a, a, a brief summary of, of the, the, the new city charter and the theory behind it. This process actually started a couple of years ago when the Ordinance Committee decided to recommend that there needed to be a Citizens Committee to review whether we needed to make a charter change or not. Um, that committee did form, did meet. Um, Alan Sewell was the chair of that committee. And they recommended that there were significant areas in the Northampton Charter that needed to be updated and modernized. And there, the next step was to create the Special Drafting Committee, whose members you see in front of us. Uh, we began about like October of last year, but we had a very quick deadline. We had about a, a four or five month deadline because the window was to put this on the November 2012 ballot. Why? Because that's the ballot that most people in the city turn out to vote. We have about 18, 19,000 registered voters in our city. In a presidential election, you get 75 to 80 percent of the people turning out. In a municipal election, for instance, for just for mayor and city council, you'll find that that number drops to anywhere between six and 10,000 voters. So we, w we felt that to get the most people to vote on this, most people to weigh in on what we thought was uh, reviewing Northampton's constitution, we wanted to make sure that it ended up on this ballot, the November 6th ballot. To that end, we um, met about 10 times, one week every night in the row. Most of ours uh, were televised. Most of ours, um, or all of them, were recorded and put up on the North Street uh, website. So all of our records are out there for people to take a look at and to review how we made a deliberatory process. We worked with a uh, consultant who helped us with a new boilerplate document that cities were adopting across the Commonwealth. This was a draft document that we felt uh, was a good place to start. The reason being is when we all reviewed the old charter, there were some very interesting things in it. And remember, this was started 129 years ago. And over the years, we've made changes to it. But some of the changes we've made contradict other changes that were made. There were parts of the charter that actually were confusing and didn't align with other parts of the charter. 
So the question was, do we start by tinkering and trying to clean everything up, or do we start with a new boilerplate charter that was being recommended by the Commonwealth? We decided to go with the new route. Um, we brought the new charter on board. We, it was divided into about seven or eight areas, which each um, of the people on the drafting committee took a lead in. The drafting committee was composed of two people at large and one person from each ward. Um, so there were nine people on that committee. We took a look at a variety of different uh, topics. We held public forums on those topics. We asked, um, at the beginning of each meeting, we had an open mic for people to get up and to help steer us in the right direction. We had a special forum of elected officials, past mayors, past city councilors, past leaders of our, common, our, our community to step in and to kind of say, you know, where should we go here? What's going on? What is your history with? And we wanted to also hear from the public who felt um, that they had opinions that were valid that we needed to make sure were incorporated in the charter. Ultimately, we decided not to make major changes because there were some significant changes out there um, that were recommended. But we decided to go the route of providing a clean, um, concise, modernized document. Not that we were going to solve all the issues in our process in the drafting committee, because there are still some outstanding issues that we basically kicked down the road. There were some um, hot topics, if you will, that we decided that can be done at a later date. We wanted a clean, modern charter that got rid of things like um, the Board of Aldermen. If you read our current charter, it refers to the powers of the Board of Aldermen. Well, the Board of Aldermen haven't existed since I was born, and let me tell you, that was more than five decades ago. Um, there was, in one part of the charter, there was actually a piece that was crossed out in pencil and in, uh, additional words written in. Um, we also had an example in this last um, changeover when our Mayor Ford resigned early, the succession planning of how you moved from the, the, a mayor who retired to the new acting mayor and the duties thereof and the, and the responsibilities thereof, that was not clean. That was not spelled out clearly in the charter. So we took it upon ourselves to make sure that those key points, the cleanup, the modernization of the charter were the main effort of what we did. We did in also embrace a handful of, uh, I will call them significant changes, and I'm going to turn to, to uh, uh, Gail Perlman to talk about what those were. And again, these can all be found in the summary or in the, b the base itself. Gail? Um, I'm, uh, for this round of information, I'm just going to highlight for you what the major changes were. If people have questions about them, we're happy to answer. Um, you know, as to our, uh, the reasoning that we use to arrive at these and so forth. But for now, I just want you to be aware of the major changes. Um, the, historically, the mayor of Northampton had always chaired the city council meetings. And we made a change on that issue. We, uh, the, new, the new charter has the city council president chairing the council's own meetings. Um, we created a special election process to fill permanent mayoral vacancies if those occur. We extended the term of the mayor to four years instead of two. We simplified school committee elections so that all the terms of the school committee members run concurrently and all of them last two years. We tried to improve the transparency of the budget process by, requir by requiring that the council approved budgets break out the cost for compensation and benefits of elected officials. In the old budgets, those were kind of glommed together and it was difficult for people to figure out what's the compensation, what are the extra benefits. We created a permanent advisory commission to make recommendations on appropriate levels of compensation and benefits for elected officials. Um, that, along with uh, one of the other uh, points where we asked for a, for a separate commission was really due to the fact that we had a very short time frame to put this new charter draft together. And some of the issues that were facing us were so detailed and so complicated that it seemed it would be wiser not to do something pre, uh, in a sort of a precipitous way and let another committee take a really careful long look at some of those issues. So that's what we did about the 
uh, levels of compensation and benefit for uh, benefits for elected officials. Um, we then um, provided that the city council had the discretion to exercise oversight of the setting of water, water and sewer rates by the Board of Public Works. There were questions about who should be the decider of those rates. Um, and we increased the signature requirements to run for at-large city council and school committee seats from 50 people to 100 people, and the number required for the uh, to run for mayor from 50 people to 150 people. What we kept, what we, what we left the old way, were the following five points. The mayor stays on as chair of the school committee meetings. The um, city clerk stays on as an elected official rather than an appointed position. We maintained the current provisions that are in the charter for certain citizen initiatives and referendums. We kept, we, um, kept all term limits out of the charter um, for all positions elected and appointed. And we retained the current process for mayoral appointments where the mayor suggests an appointment and the city council um, approves or declines to approve. I'll then turn to two other folks that are here to introduce themselves and see if there's anything else you wanted to add about the process and how <coughs> we got to make a recommendation to the city council. Um, <clears throat> my name is Todd Thompson. I was the Ward 2 rep um, on the Charter Drafting Committee. I guess the only point I would add at this stage is that um, a number of issues came before the committee that we looked at and decided that didn't really belong in the charter. They belong perhaps in the council rules book. Um, we wanted, again, a clean and lean charter. We didn't want to clog it full of minutia and, and rules that belonged elsewhere. So some issues may come up tonight about why didn't we include X, Y, and Z. There was a lot of sympathy for some more um, rules-based changes, but we felt that that was best dealt with by the council and not by the charter. Uh, I'm Madeline Weaver Blanchett, and I was on the committee um, from Ward 3. Um, I guess what I would add about the process is that um, uh, there was vigorous debate and dissension on this committee. Um, and uh, the, what we decided at the beginning is that we would be looking for a consensus so that we could put forth um, a comprehensive document, and we did succeed in that. But this document does represent compromise, and um, you know it wasn't arrived at easily. So again, this process, we recommended our uh, process after several open hearings. Uh, open mics where people were able to come and, and to talk about specific areas. We then took the process to the City Council and we made the recommendation to uh, the Mayor and the nine members of the City Council member. Many of them are here in the audience tonight and can also answer any questions. But I was um, uh, enlightened, educated, and pleased by the debate on the City Council floor. I thought it was probably one of the most informative processes I've seen on City Council in a long time because there was, there was a lot of discussion about the various issues that were there. Um, I was pleased that they took a vote. Um, they introduced the on one day, they took a vote. The next meeting and then the third meeting, they took their final vote. And then we passed it and sent it forward to the uh, mayor's office who took it to the House of Representatives. The House of Representatives then had to vet it. They made some significant, not significant, they made some uh, changes to it that were more, um, I don't want to say grammatical, but more housekeeping, housekeeping yeah, supporting, supportive issues, um, no structural issues, if you will. They were more just sort of helping us clean it up and making sure the language was compliant with uh, mass general laws. It then went to the Senate, who had the same process, made a few more suggestions. Again, our city solicitor, Alan Seawald, was in contact the entire time, uh, going back and forth with the, the discussion on that. It then went to the governor's office for um, uh, his veto or approval. He fortunately did sign it. Uh, the Secretary of State, uh, uh, with a little bit of nudging, helped put it on the ballot. 
And the final step we wanted, again, was to have it on this ballot because of 18, 19,000 people. We're hoping that the majority of people do support this document and that we're able then to um, uh, have a new modernized charter that is flexible, streamlined, clean, and lean. Fantastic. <clears throat> We'd like to open up the floor now. Uh, if anybody has any comments or questions uh, for, the, for the Charter Drafting Committee, uh, please, if you want to stand up, step up to the podium, uh, state your name. Um, one at a time, thank you. Hi, I'm Jesse Adams. I'm, I'm from 187 Main Street in Northampton. I'm also one of the two city councilors at large. And just a few points. I, first thing I'd like to say is that I, I support the charter 100% um, in its current form, in the form that everyone will be voting on in November. For, I'll enumerate f four reasons briefly because they've already been stated, but they're the reasons why, amongst others, I support them. First of all, um, we will have a, a system where the city council president um, will chair the, the city council as opposed to the mayor, which is the certain, which is the, the current form. And that's in line with almost every city in the state. There's only one other, uh, if we change, that will be left that has that antiquated form. And um, all state legislators have that form where the, where the legislature runs itself and similar with the federal Congress. Um, and that is, is significant. It creates a clearer separation of powers and a stronger balance of powers, and those are, are extremely important. Um, compensation for elected officials will be a separate line item in, in the budget, and that results in um, a discussion about whether or not those, um, the compensation is deserved and appropriate or whether it should be changed. And that will also lead to greater budget transparency. It will lead to a modern, readable, accessible 21st century document that's extremely important for anyone who has looked at the, do the charter in its current form, and I encourage everyone to do that so they can see and compare what the new document will be if it's passed in November. Also, council oversight of water and sewer fees is a, is a tremendous, um, is, is, is an important change. And it gives, um, it gives the, the electorate the ability to hold responsible the city council who is more directly um, at their disposal and can be removed if, if those fees are not reasonable. I did not agree with every provision, uh, excuse me, provision, but I support it completely and respect the lengthy process and the genuine deliberations that got us to this final product. product. Um, as, as Maddie Blanchett stated, just as there was great debate with your committee, with the drafting committee, there was great debate with the city council and, and really admirable, I think, deliberations. Every part of this was discussed at length, and I think that we really, really we really um, got a chance to look at it and opine, and I think that this process should be respected. Also, with respect to uh, what Mr. Thompson said, some of the minutia has been removed, and that, that minutia that was removed now gives the city council the, the latitude to fill in some of those blanks. And um, that's, not, that's, a, that's a big thing that actually empowers the legislature and also creates, a, 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 again, a stronger balance of powers because those things that were removed can be filled in by the, the legislature, the city council, and restores a, a better balance of powers, better separation of powers. Um, also, with respect to um, Mr. Roth's points that did not make the charter, just so everyone knows, there's a, a, I propose a new set of council rules and I think most of the council agreed that what Mr. Roth was proposing would be more appropriate as a council rule. And the, his main points are um, embodied in one of the rules I've suggested. So that conversation is still alive, and, and the council will continue to discuss that. So I don't think that that in and of itself, uh, the fact that that hasn't made this charter, um, is a reason to vote it down because that's still a live issue. But again, that issue was discussed at length by this committee and by ours. So I think that we still have that opportunity to have that discussion. So I would hope people wouldn't vote it down for that purpose. Um, but I'm asking all of my constituents to support this 100% as I'm supporting 100%. Thank you. Thank you very much.
If we could, Mr. Chairman, could we just introduce you gentlemen who were joined us a little late, both members of the Special Drafting Committee, just in what ward you represent? Mark Warner, Ward 5. Uh, Bill Scher, Ward 4. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there other uh, comments or questions, please? Good evening, City Councilor Mary Ann LaBarge from Ward 6. Um, I am going to support this charter 100%. And I am asking my residents in Ward 6 to please come and support this charter. There have been some problems, which I saw, attending the committee on, on revising this charter. And Barry Roth's amendment was one of them with me, which I felt made sense. But Councilor Adams just verified we had a lengthy meeting last night in ordinance for city councilors, and we are looking at that very, very carefully because I think his language was very valuable. My big concern is, which I'm hearing from many of my residents, is the Board of Public Works. It's huge out there. Of them having the ability to go ahead and raise the fees, and that does not come to city council. With this new charter, it is going to open the doors where the mayor will have that authority, okay, to bring an ordinance into city council and we can have a heavy debate and say, no, we want to make a compromise here. This is what we want. This is what the fee should be. I want to thank the committee. I know Councilor Jesse Adams and I were on it for almost a year with the first committee and it's a lot of work. And I want to thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please. Uh, Councilor Bill Dwight, uh, Councilor at Large, and now currently standing as Council President. Um, first of all, a uh, small correction the Secretary of State did not facilitate <laughs> putting it on the ballot. In fact, the yeah. Secretary of State. Kind of I was trying to be kind. Yeah, well, that was too <laughs> kind because I, I, it's kind of important that everyone know that when this when they go to vote, you'll actually have to go to two tables to pick up two ballots. There's a separate. This is a special city election that will require you to get two ballots to vote yay or nay, and one's exclusively dedicated to this very one question, which you know on some level is good because it it actually it isolates it and emphasizes the the importance for that this document represents for our city. And I also, I, I, and all I want to do is also reiterate and, and emphasize the amount of deliberation and effort that's been involved in creating this document from, I, I, Council LaBarge was talking about a new charter when I first got elected 16 years ago, something? Something, yeah. I was, we were all much younger then, but um, there's, there have been a lot of circumstances that the council over over the years have had difficulty trying to navigate some of the antiquities that are built there in, into the charter, and uh, and and uh, graphically illustrated by uh, the point that David Stevens brought up was when actually it was Mayor Higgins, not Mayor Ford. Sorry. I think it was you guys, <laughs> but when Claire Higgins left early. Now it's still, I think, under under these the established guidelines that are being proposed. Uh, circumstances really want to change that much, but the order of succession. Well, I speak from personal dread. I am the council president. If the mayor, for any reason, were not to be able to finish out his term starting today, that would make me mayor of the city of Northampton. I don't want to be, <laughs> and I don't want to be, especially for five thousand dollars a year. And at the same time, the more important point to the citizens of Northampton, not the least of which is the prospect of having me as a mayor, but the, the other one is that, that I, you either lose a counselor or you don't have the division of powers that we've described. You have someone who actually could preside as a counselor, as a representative, and then also as an administrator. And uh, that's the order of ascension was critical to establish. And the charter, much as we, the, as I'm sure all of you discovered, was uh, when, from the time that it was originally conceived, it has evolved much like the road system in the city of Northampton, which is basically it followed various paths that made sense at the time. They, 
and it was cobbled together and jerry-rigged and scotch-taped and penciled as it went along, and looking like David Stevens' date book, as I recall. And now we have an opportunity to um, vote in and secure a, a document that actually, in the language of this document, it is codified that we have to review the, the validity of the charter and how it applies to the community as it changes. Um, that was never stated before. That was never established before. Now we actually, it is, it is by the order of law, essentially, or, the, or the, the charter that we hope to abide by if this becomes, if this does become law. So the process that was involved in this, uh, every sector of the city was somehow involved in this. And there was the meetings, for the most part, the ones that I went to were very well attended and with lots of very thoughtful discussion. There were the meetings that led up to the establishment of your committee that went for almost a year. There were the meetings that your committee conducted. There were the, the um, public sessions that were conducted here in this, in this room with the council. The council then deliberated. Uh, and as you said, it was, it, it was a very long and thoughtful deliberation. And we, you know, and compromises were made, but it was, it is a representation of consensus. It's a representation, this document is a representation of a myriad of uh, opinions and thoughts and visions for what this community could and should be. And it also has built in it, into it that I, something that I greatly admire is the flexibility to adjust and accommodate the community when and if it changes as it changes. So. Uh, just to reemphasize that very special point, when you go to vote, whether it's up or down, please remember to pick up the second ballot at the second table. There will be extra poll workers. Uh, Wendy Mazza, the city clerk, is working very hard to make sure that this goes very smoothly. And I don't want to give the Secretary of State any thanks he's not due. So noted. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Please. Yes, sir. Good evening, I'm Gene Tacey. I represent Ward 7 of the Northampton City Council. And I want to thank everybody for everything that they did on this. It was exhausting. And also the committee before you uh, that put all this together and let you sort it out. And I, I want to, uh, for a minute, I don't want anybody to think that anything just went through very, very quickly in the number of meetings and the exhaustive process and just I do, have a, I, I do have a life, but I did listen to the March 15th meeting of the City Council where we debated these points again. And to give you an example, the, uh, the yellow dots are yeses, the blue dots are noes, and the two orange are abstentions. This was a series of eight roll call votes that happened on the 15th. Uh, of March of this year and it was completely divided these were amendments that were put forth uh, amendments that were brought back up again that failed on the first meeting in March when we first addressed it uh, things that were brought back up and then some that were tried they were tried to block them because they didn't think that they should have been brought back up by Robert's rules or by whoever's rules but and I've always said this, when a vote goes your way, that's good. And when it doesn't go your way, you get over it and you move on because the business of the city continues. Well, a lot of the things that are in the charter I really didn't agree with. And I still don't. But it's not a reason to throw the charter out. This is a process. This is, you're, not everybody's going to be happy. And I understand that. I'm not happy. But I'm ready to move on. And however the, the voters look at this, and however this goes, it goes. And it won't be for lack of, of leadership. It won't be for lack of trying. Or it won't be for a lack of any effort on, all of the, on the part of all the people that were involved in this. And that includes uh, even Barry, Barry Roth, his, his amendment. I tried bringing that up a second time. It didn't go over the second. It didn't, didn't go over the first time when I brought it up. It didn't go over the second time. But I attempted it. Um, and like I said, either this, it'll either pass or it won't. It's up to the voters. Uh, we had a meeting in here a couple of weeks back. We discussed stormwater. 
I drove by the building here and I looked in the parking lot. The parking lot was full. There was 200 cars out there. I went, oh, geez. I continued on by, went back to the house. I got changed. I came to the meeting. I came in. There was four people sitting here. So I had expected tonight to come by and see this place mobbed. I expect this is, this is an important item. This is huge for the city of Northampton. And so I'm a little disappointed, and I talked to more people today about the charter than are here right now. So I'm a little disappointed that more people did not show up. Um, this is huge, and uh, we'll see how it comes out in November. So uh, you don't throw the whole thing out with the bath. <laughs> We won't get into the baby thing. I'm getting into some trouble for being politically incorrect. But uh, anyway, I, I want to thank you all very much for everything you did. I appreciate Gene's support of this uh, charter. And the, the issue that I want to also just add in at this point is that this is not now fly, uh, put in stone. We have created a charter which is flexible that can be changed. So in the future, for instance, uh, Maddie and I had a, a discussion, disagreement, uh, about whether we needed preliminary elections or not, and whether we should hold primaries and preliminaries, or should we go straight to a full ballot. We felt that that, again, was an issue that should go to the special commission. A special commission, we hope, will be established by the city council. They'll take a look at our election processes itself, and then they will bring that recommendation back to the city council to be included as a charter amendment. So this is a document that will continue to be fluid and flexible, that will continue to adapt as we move through the 21st century. But we need to get to this baseline. We need to get to this document and clean up 130 years of crossed out handwritten notes and get it into a modern format so changes can be made uh, as needed as we move in, into the 21st century. Thank you. Other comment, please, yes, sir. I've heard my name mentioned. I'm Barry Roth. Um, Gene said he was surprised not to see more people here. Why should there be more people here? If there was a, uh, a debate going on for the President of the United States, how many people would attend if it was just one party there? So what we have here yet again, and that we had for several months, is a dog and pony show. Our high priestesses over here, the enlightened ones. And we're here, and we get up to the podium for a minute or two. At be maybe today it'll be a little bit longer to present our views. There are so many things wrong with this charter, it's hard to know where to begin. But let's start with the reasons for making it a four-year term. We have Bill Dwight in our audience. Well, Bill Dwight was very influential in getting the four-year term. He said, you know what? People really can't be trusted to know what's right for the city sometimes. We need a strong mayor so that he can make his points and get them across. Well, if we had a four-year mayor, maybe we have in the middle of city, of the city right now some huge hotel. But because the people had a right to vote and have an influence, that, thank God, is not there right now. I know Bill Dwight was for that hotel. Then the issue was raised about possibly having a veto. Because, my God, this is a small city. This is not the 1800s, where things take forever to get done. We have electronic communication. Years ago, it would take six months to, get, to put together a pamphlet or a book. Today, we can do that in a weekend. But we don't, have a, we don't have the right of recall. You know why we don't have a right of recall? Because of the other bill. Yeah, we got double billed on this charter. Bill Sherrod over here, he's the one who said, you know what, the people can't be trusted. I did not say that. Yes, you did. I did not. Don't, uh, you're not going to say let me no, speak. You, no. speak. you are not going to sit here and put words in my mouth. Vote. Mr. And I'm not Mr. Mr. Sure. I'll go and respond the same way. The point is, he said essentially, look what happened in Wisconsin. 
Look how the people there immediately brought up a second uh, election no sooner was the first election done. And if we have that a vote, a, a vote right of recall over here, we're going to have the same thing in this city. That's a disgusting reason for not having a right of recall vote. It is outrageous that somebody should be able to sit in that office for four years and block out the voices of the people. But it doesn't end over there. You talked about the uh, separating the mayor and not having him in the city council to, sp to speak. Well, there's certainly good points, good points for that. But you know what? If, you don't have, if you're not connected to someone with a connection to the mayor, you're going to have one hell of a time trying to speak to him. That's a fact. You may have somebody, you may get along with your city council, and they'll bring it to the mayor, fine. Or you may, like Mr. Gargis, give $5,000 to the mayor's campaign. I guarantee you there'll be an express door for him to get to the mayor to speak to him. But I don't know about the rest of you. What are some of the other issues that ha this, our high priestesses haven't bothered to talk about? We talked about the right of petition. Well, you know, that's something that's guaranteed, I think, in the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights, you have the right to petition your government. But the way the charter works right now is, they'll tell you you have the right to say whatever you want. But, but in a reality, a petition means that it's considered by your government. They'll say you can write it on a piece of paper and, drop, and turn it into a paper airplane and throw it off a cliff. And that will be your right to petition the government. But it doesn't get heard. The reason I got into this, the reason I got so involved with this, the way I've been spent so much of my limited free time on this issue, is because they changed the rules, the environmental rules in my community, and I went to some meetings, and it was like I was invisible. You wonder why people aren't here? People aren't here because they know they have no con they have no say in the government. It's all decided in committee, long before they ever have a chance to say in it. Why is it? that there hasn't been a single, single debate with pros and cons for this charter prior to, to at all, since, it, since the word it was finalized. I haven't seen one decent debate with the people who are for it and the people who are against it. And there's another thing. You say it was approved by this group and that group and this group and that group. What these people did was say, we approve to give the right of the citizens to make that decision. This, the fact that it has been allowed to get this far doesn't mean that they're necessarily for it. If they're for it, they'll say so. But all, the, all of these accreditations that you've given, all, all they amount to is saying that you, the citizens, have a right to make that decision and we should be listened to. Look, I work 12 hours a day. I don't really, didn't have time to prepare for this. I'm pretty exhausted. But I'm just one guy. Can you imagine how wonderful it would be if the government were truly open? There's no reason to go along with this. We have the right to formulate the government that we want. We can put into that charter, mandated in that charter, that sure there will be a separation between the city council and the mayor, but the mayor will be required to appear at least once every three months so you, who can't get into his office to question him, will be able to question him directly. I'm thinking of one citizen, Steve Susco, how he flailed in front, in front how he's gotten nowhere trying to, to get some uh, someplace with the damage done to his property and his health, and silence from our government. M it Mr. is disgusting. I see our city council passing memos after memos about Afghanistan and this and that. Mr. Roth. And denying freedom in our city. You know, if you pass, it will last for 100 years. 100 years, and this is your best chance to stop it, because once it passes, your voice will be greatly diminished. Thank you. Thanks, I you want to get into this? Uh, since, since, since I was mentioned, can I? I think it's fair. Respond, and, and if I can speak on behalf of Bill, uh, he did not say that either. Before you do, though, I think it's important we discuss we discuss topics, not people, and keep it not personal. Um, I think names gets out of line. Let's discuss the the charter itself. But but I, th I think I, I'm happy to do that. Um, just the, that was a factually inaccurate comment. Uh, it was never said by anybody in this process that the people cannot be trusted. Nobody ever, ever said that. Nobody believes it. It's not the basis of the recommendations in the charter. There's a discussion about uh, should we have a two-year, four-year mayoral term? Uh, and the question was posed, what would provide the best 
accountability, and the best ability for, for good performance. And there are good arguments on both sides. Uh, the argument that won the day after much debate, much within this committee that, that we had, much committee within the city council itself, they voted on it separately. It was a close vote. Uh, people had their uh, opportunity to have their opinions heard on it. The flag was raised during the debate. Uh, there was an opportunity for people to have weighed in before the council voted on this. And there was not a lot of criticism aired publicly before them taking this vote. Uh, I even raised myself at one of the council meetings, hey, don't, let's not bit the whole charter on this if the people aren't going to like it. But the people uh, did not raise a lot of Christians about it in the process. And the argument for a four-year term was, what would allow the mayor the chance to have his or her ideas properly tested before the voters have the opportunity to render judgment? And what would also give the voters an opportunity to weigh in in the middle of that term via the biennial council election and school committee elections? What would be the best balance of those two goals? We thought that uh, since there are still going to be two-year elections for the full council and now two-year elections for the full school committee, which has not been the case in the past, uh, that if the voters did not like the direction that a mayor was going in, there'd be an opportunity to ask for a course correction through those elections, while also giving the mayor the chance to say, you know what, I might take a chance on a particular idea because I, th I think you're going to like it uh, after it's had a chance to work. And if you don't like it after it has a chance to work, you still get to fire me. You know, we have four-year terms for a lot of things in this country, and it doesn't mean we're, not, we're undemocratic. Uh, we were trying to find that balance. Uh, the recall question that, that was raised here, uh, also, it was not a question of do you trust the people. It's a question of what is the best time to render judgment on uh, the executive's actions. Uh, and we were concerned that with the recall provision that, uh, because there's always a minority, there's always a party that loses an election. Uh, if that party was able to go straight to a recall right away, all the time, you'd just be in perennial gridlock, perennial confrontation. Uh, there has to be a chance for those who are elected to govern and have their ideas tested. Uh, that was the logic behind it. You may disagree with it still. Uh, there are good arguments on both sides. Uh, we, we do suggest that it's not the only thing in the entire charter. You can, as, as I think Councilor Tacey said, you could not like one thing. It doesn't mean that the whole thing is, is a disaster. You have, to, you have to look at all the aspects that are in it and weigh the pros and cons. Uh, and that's what uh, we tried to do. It's what the council has tried to do. This forum is being held so folks can still debate it because uh, nothing is final until the voters uh, render their decision on, on November 6th. I want to respond as well to a general comment that Mr. Roth made, suggesting that the committee was really just lackeys of the powers in the city and that we are these high priests here, but we essentially just yielding our judgment to the people who sponsored us and putting us on this committee. What complete nonsense. We were completely independent of anybody who had any authority anywhere else in the city. We were looking at changing the charter as it was set up 120 years ago so that it was going to be in a place and appropriate for the city for the next 120 years, not for people who were in power today. We deliberated these things independently and we did it thoughtfully and seriously. And to suggest otherwise is really to impugn our integrity. Why do you think you were picked? Come on, I was picked because I put myself forward to get the job here. I was also on the previous committee as well. We took it seriously. Why? You are suggesting that we should be cynical because of who we, that the voters should be cynical of this process. But yes, this is, the cynicism is what you are generating. Your objections here, you're impugning our integrity yeah, I, is I absurd. Think, I think we're turning it, okay. excuse me, Mr. Roth, Mr. Roth, I think we're turning it personal again, again. I, I apologize. He's, he's, he's addressing me. I, no, I, that is fair, but, but let's, let's try, not, let's stay off the personal, uh, Mr. Stevens. Um, the committee followed the open meeting process. We also followed the uh, best practices that were, were process that the um, city had been reviewing over the last couple of years. All of our meetings had open forums for people to stand up. Mr. Roth spoke at every meeting, shared his thoughts at every meeting in front of the city council, and we made a recommendation to the city council. The city council ultimately made the final decision, the final recommendation. And as Gene Tacey pointed out, and I appreciate it, we didn't agree on everything throughout the process. 
But the whole point is we came up with a final document that we set forward to move, move our city into a modern era, into the 21st century, not a 19th century document, which we've been operating on over the last 130 years. So this document gives us the new rules of government that we'll be able to operate on. To the other point about this, some of the specifics, we had to decide what goes in the charter. The charter is your constitution. It is basically, do we have a mayor or do we have a town government? Do we have a uh, town meeting? Do you have elections in May or do you have elections in November? That's what a charter is about. It talks about who has what rules and responsibilities of these elected and appointed officials. That's what a charter does. In terms of some of the recommendations that we felt, there were, we would call them basically code of conduct, or they should be in the ordinance book, which is what Councillor Adams recommended. He recommended and has put forward, which was our recommendation as well. We felt there were some very valid points that came through the process. We recommended that that best practice that had been uh, discussed heavily on the floor should be incorporated in the ordinance book. Jesse Adams is, is bringing that forward with the ordinance committee with Marianne Labarge. That's the next step for that piece of it. But finally, no matter how this comes out, let's just take a look at what happens November 7th. If on November 7th, the, the community has said, mm, we're going to vote no, we have to start the process all over again. We have November 6th, but if we wake up November 7th and we figure out the, the, committee, the community voted no, on November 7th, we have to start the process all over again. We have to go back to the Ordinance Committee to create the Citizens Committee, to create the Drafting Committee, to bring it to the City Council for two votes, to take it to the State of Representatives, to take it to the State Senate, to take it to the Governor's Office, to get it past this, the um, uh, Secretary of State, to get it on the ballot. The way the, the Charter is written now, it is a flexible document that we can change. If a year from now we say, hey, that did not work out, we need to change it, so be it. We have a document now that we can move forward on that we, is a clean and concise document that you can make the changes that are necessary. That's what our goal was, was to get a document that gives us now the ability to move forward and not to keep looking back. In case there was another change in the mayoral ship, and I, sorry I, I misspoke, it was when Claire Higgins um, stepped down. Um, if that were to happen again, we have a clean way of, of that succession, how that's to work out. We now know who does what appointments and who does what responsibilities. That's the purpose of this document, was to clean up those contradictions that had existed in the, in the old charter. And I don't agree with everything in it. I don't think anybody at this table thinks that they got 100% of what they wanted. But it is a piece of legislation that will become our city constitution. And to that end, you have to make compromises. And sometimes you win some discussions and sometimes you don't. But what I felt was that everybody had the opportunity to articulate their point of view. And they could make their case. And sometimes they change minds. Maddie actually changed my mind on two occasions. And I think that that helped with the, the public discourse because we had the number of people who were able to say, mm, I hear what you're saying, I'm going to change it, or no, I'm going to stay with the opinion I have. That was the, what the process was about, and I think the process was very successful. Are there, please, Mr. Glenn. Um, I would, I, I take considerable exception, obviously, with suggestion that this is essentially a rigged game and that the participation was minimal in the, in the city, that it, was, it actually covered the sweep of the city. And I would also ask anyone who has any doubts that may have been established just moments ago that they, uh, they can do as Councilor Tacey did, uh, which is review the deliberation on the council, which is available through NCTV. You can see the entire uh, delivered a process the and the divided votes the divided votes reflected a very robust debate on on I think almost every issue that uh, uh, was mentioned just recently and and that is the essence of a healthy democracy that is the manifestation of a deliberative process in its best form. This process 
has been, is by my reckoning, an exemplar of the way we should conduct business in the, in the, in, in employing best practices, inclusion, deliberation, debate and division. And I think if anyone's feeling any inkling of shame associated with this, I, I counsel you not to. This is a source of pride. The, 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 the actual document as it's presented is the work and the labor and the debate and the, and the sweat and the, and the agony and also the good hopes and faith that have been invested in it by the full breadth of this community. And it is, it is a perfect democratic document. Now, as, as being a perfect, as, as David Stevens said, the, it being a perfect democratic document, it is not by fiat, it is not being declared by, by one person. One person hasn't said this, is, this shall be. This isn't one cabal that got together in smoky back rooms and came up with this. This is a, and this is a document that reflects by, by at least everything, what we'll find out, whether it reflects adequately to the general public on, on election day. Personally, it's my hope that it does. But the fact is, is, if it fails, it should not fail on the fact that it's been impugned, or the process has been impugned. That I reject in, as emphatically as I can. And I, I, that, I, I, I hope everyone understands that there is reason to be proud of the product, if, even if you don't agree with the contents. Uh, in the blue coat with the scarf, please. Pink shirt. I'm sorry, I don't, yes. Yes, please, thank you. We need name tags. Yeah. Hello, my name Hi. is Mary Ann Berlin, and I'm a Northampton resident. And uh, thank you for letting me speak. But my um, speech is very simple. I, uh, f I don't know why you couldn't separate the transliteration of the old uh, uh, document and the discussion we're having now and the voting. Why are they so close together? Why couldn't they have been done last year or the year before? And then this year, we have the discussion on the changes. Here, here it says, the primary goal of all overhauling the city's 129-year-old charter is to replace the archaic language that many find difficult to interpret and streamline patchwork amendments that make the overall document hard to follow. I think you take us for very uneducated people who, once this is translate, transliterated into a new language, that we would understand it and then make intelligent decisions and comments and, uh, and give you suggestions. Um, I just can't understand that it was so close together. I would have liked to read the new constitution and think about it and then come to meetings and, and uh, see what, uh, what I could contribute. This is, I found it very upsetting that we are, we are taken like we live in a hick town and, uh, and are not educated so that we can understand the Constitution. That really, uh, that really bothered me. Um, I don't know how it's done in other cities. I'm sure many of them have newer constitutions as well uh, and have them translated, but did they act as quickly as you did here? I could see that you had to make some changes, language changes and, and interpretation changes, but you are changing the Constitution. Big, big changes, those are two separate things, getting, getting it into new language and making, new, making a, a new Constitution. It's just... Uh, Actually, Mark... It, it, it's, Mark it, sounds, it almost sounds like deception to me. If I could. This is a three-year process. This isn't something that took a short period of time. The Ordinance Committee started in 2010 to take a look at this, this document and said, okay. Then they created, again, another committee, and then a, our committee, and then it went to the City Council. So this has been going on for almost three years. And we have had public forum after public forum after public forum. We've been in the Gazette, we've been on HMP Radio, we've been on uh, Northampton Cable TV. We have 
been out there tell, saying, go read the charter. Here's where you find it. It's on the city website if you want to read the old charter. The new charter is now on the city website, and it's also on a sp its special website. So we've provided that information over this three-year period of time. The changes, the meeting notes are all here. They are all on the website for people to read. We're not trying to... Well, my to, computer is broken. Uh, <laughs> it's all available through the, the council, city council clerk's office. You can go down and read it there. To, to give her a call, have it sent to you. That information exists. When was, when was the, 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 the translation finished? When, when we was made it? our recommendation back in February, mm -hmm. and then it went to the... The bill was at your two March meetings or a March and an April meeting. It, it, it went to the city council during that sort of late winter period of time. Mm -hmm. And then it went off to the House of Representatives and then to the Senate and to the governor and down the process mm -hmm. line. So that, that has been the process we've been following, um, which is prescribed by this um, the special act of the charter. And we have just been following what came from the institute um, and the consultant of how we were to do this. So we are following sort of the, the, the pathway that has been recommended by the Commonwealth. But every, everything that I heard was we were rushed, 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 rushed. Uh, the only rush that we had and, and, and was that be, between the October, our first meeting, we had to have the document out by February, which meant that we ended up having to meet nightly during one week. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to have taken a little bit longer time. But the purpose was to have it on this November's ballot. And again, I'm just thinking the majority of, of, of people voting. You have, again, we'll see hopefully on November 6th, 16,000 people will show out to vote. Mm -hmm. 16,000 people, I hope, weigh in on this. Mm -hmm. Okay? And I hope the majority say yes. Which is a higher, higher turn than a typical municipal but, election. But in a municipal election, you might only have 8,000 people voting. The, the other question I have, what is the benefit for the people of the changes? Uh, as a resident, what benefits will I gain from your new charter? Can I answer that one? Please. Um, I mean, the idea of all this, I mean, to your, to your point, uh, you know, we often ask that question ourselves. You know, the primary goal is to just modernize the language. Um, let's try to, to take too much on and risk it, you know, failing on Election Day. No one wanted that to have happen. Mm -hmm. And so we were trying to be very careful not to put any changes on the charter that we thought would be rejected. Uh, so, and some of these, you know, controversial topics had a lot of discussion. You know, we we all represent different wards. Uh, we had two public forums to, to get a temperature from from the public. We had the city council open debates as well. Uh, the Gazette previewed some of the changes before <coughs> those council meetings, so people have an opportunity to weigh into their council and say, "Hey, I like this or I don't like this." Uh, you know, those are all concerns that were considered before. It wasn't just a Russian headfirst mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of thing. Uh, but we all, but because it is a three-year process, and because you, you don't review your entire charter every six months, it's every, roughly every 10 years, um, you don't get a lot of opportunities to make improvements. Uh, and so we looked at it and said, how, how could we improve the democracy overall? What, what would be the benefit to the community? We thought there were a lot of concerns about separation of powers, uh, too much executive power, and we also heard concerns about um, uh, executive performance. And those, and those uh, goals, there's some tension between those things. Mm -hmm. So that's why we said, okay, let's take the gavel of the council meetings out of the mayor's hand, put it in the city council president's hand. Let's not blur the, separ let's not blur the, the branches anymore. People didn't seem to like that. Uh, and so now the, now the mayor won't have the gavel for council meetings if this passes. There were concerns about the transparency of people's compensation packages. Uh, people didn't know what, what the salaries and the benefits the councilors were making. Uh, so we said, okay, let's, uh, this, was, this was Todd's you know, big point. He was, he, was, he was very diligent about this. Uh, let's have the mayor's budget be, have a line item broken out so the public can see what the benefits are for the councilors and, and that would mitigate some of the inherent conflicts of interest of councilors voting on their own compensation packages. Uh, so, uh, and, and the school committee question also came up. People don't know when school committee uh, uh, members are up for office because they're on, the, on this weird staggered basis, some for two years, some for four years, odd number of wards one year, even number of wards another year. No one even knows that. So they don't even know who's running. And often people don't even choose the run because they don't even know the election's around the corner. So all those kinds of things we tried to clarify in this. Uh, the overarching thrust of this, how do we strengthen the democracy for everybody? That was, that's the benefit we're trying to provide with this document. If, obviously, if people don't agree with the choices that we made in the 
the council made, they can say no. But that was the, the idea of the improvements that were made. I, I, I still wish I would have had the opportunity to read the new um, constitution. Uh, you do. You do. Well, you do now. Yeah. You, and if you don't like I it, will, you can vote uh, no. Can I get it at the library? You, um, you can get it on the, from the city from the, the, the city government offices directly. Okay. Or on the NorthamptonMA.gov website or the link on charteryes.blogspot.com. And, and where can I read the old one? You can get that from the city as well. Oh, okay. They're, Thanks. They're, they're both on the city website and, and yeah. from the city directly. Some good winter reading. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> well, let's hope it's not winter quite yet. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Roth has been waiting, and then, sir, you'll be next. Thank you. Look, nobody's questioning your integrity. I don't mean to in any way. In, in, in of course you were. <laughs> you know, you have a bad habit of putting words into people's mouth. That seems to be the. That seems to be what elite elites do. They like to tell tell you what you what you believe. Yeah, I disagree with that. But I believe that you believe what you what you are. I think that you're doing what you think is good for the for the, for the city. I don't question that, and I, I respect all of you for the hard work that you've done and the many uh, significant and important uh, changes that you've put into there. But the system was floored, and, the system, and, and you didn't hear me. Clearly, clearly, uh, I was blocked uh, from speaking at the time. My very, uh, the petition that I asked to be instilled, I was actually blocked from even speaking to clarify the misrepresentation. And I'm sorry, Bill, but you wrote up, it was your responsibility to, I, uh, to present my petition, and you didn't, you, you, you didn't put what I had written down. So I'm upset. Well, I, I, so, so, uh, I don't even know what so you're Let's not get into that. All I want to say is I respect all the hard work that everyone has done, but I do feel that essentially what you have are a closed community who don't understand what it's like for the average working person who doesn't get current city government. I believe that this will close them out even more. And I'm just one of you folk. I'm part of the great unwashed masses. And, uh, you know, I'm sure all these, for the most part, these people are all much more successful than I am. And that, to some extent, I take my, my hat off to them for that, because that shows they know what they're doing and they're hardworking. But still, I, I believe that we could, we could postpone that, and we, we could, if enough time is, is permitted, all get together and read, read something that would satisfy all of us. And I think that I have a good ideas. Other people out there have good ideas. And, and if we delayed it a little bit, we'd get a better constitution. So I thank all of you at the end, honestly. And I mean that from the, my heart. I respect Bill Dwight. I've debated him. I disagree fundamentally with him. But he's, he's a decent guy, as are you all. So, but we just don't feel heard. I don't feel heard. What you heard was anger. Anger for not being heard. Anger for the other people who aren't being heard. And I thank, I thank you, Bob. And that's it. Thank you. Sir? Yes, Mike? please. Mike? Oh, I'm sorry. I guess I, guess I got a split role here is to kind of report on the meeting for my blog and also to just ask questions. So I think I'll just ask questions or try to brief it. But I guess it was the perception from the woman that just spoke of a rush that that it it came because the aim of your committee was to get fifteen thousand people or around that figure to vote on it versus a, a municipal election which would be about eight thousand. Um, I'm not sure that that's a compelling, compelling enough reason to rush. Um, I have questions about. Um, Let me, can I just clarify that you think it would be better if fewer citizens voted on the new charter? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm. I'm I guess I'm saying. That if citizens get a feeling that it's a that it's a bad job or it's been rushed through, then they they may vote something down, just because of process, the perception of process. Mm -hmm. And I guess this is just a comment that that the you as a committee, I'm sure you don't see this as a rushed process, but but from the outside, it seems to people that. It, 
that it was, to some people, that it was a rush. And um, the question of information is, I don't understand why if the people turn it, oh, the question of how does it appear on the ballot? What, what is the ballot going to look like? Are there going to be um, an argument for it and an argument against it? Is the full text? The full text can't be on it. What, the full text who's going to write the summary? Who are, who are doing that. There will be a summary of the thing and it will say to adopt this charter or to, to reject this charter. So it will be a yes or no. Yes vote is to adopt the charter and no vote will be to say no. And is there going to be a summary of the charter? There will be a, a summary blurb, yes. I don't know the length of that blurb. I don't know the content of the verb. That would have to be, Mike, I would talk to um, Wendy about that, our city clerk, and find out specifically All right. about that. Um, let, me, let me see if I have anything else that's coherent here. Or not. Mm. Okay. Mike, uh, can you just introduce yourself and tell you? Oh, Mike Kirby, okay. Yeah, and, your, and your blog. Okay, your blog uh, 134 people. North Street. Uh, my blog is uh, Kirby on the Loose. Um, and he's sometimes on the loose, sometimes he's on tether. But anyway. <laughs> uh, you say that if that we have to start the process all over again, yeah. um, what if the voter just voted down? Can you just live with the old charter? Well, we will have to live with the old charter. <laughs> In other words, you don't need to start the whole deliberative process all over again. It's an, it's an option to start it all over again. If you feel strongly, if the people involved feel strongly, you ought to go back to the vote. Is that clear? I think is the point is fair? changing the charter is, a, is a, a lengthy process. So if we vote it down, we right. will defeat this proposed new charter. If someone comes along, if the council decides in two years they want to propose a new charter, they have to start the process all over again. It's a three-year process. Can they just make amendments, though, to the old charter? Yeah, they can. They have been. The, the charter. This the is the way the it's been for a long time. It just continued to do that. Correct. Well, and it, it takes you a while because, again, you have to go to uh, the legislature. We just right. did that with the Board of Public Health, where we changed it from a three person board to a five person board. And that took us, I believe, six to eight months to, to accomplish. It might have even been longer. So, again, the, the, we would just continue to do business as normal. The, the world doesn't stop if the vote is no on November 6th. Good. I have just. One thing as a human being, as a person, I see there are some good things in this. And there are things that I disagree with. Um, what else was I going to say? Did anyone ever raise the city manager, the, the position yeah. of replacing the? Uh, no, we, we, we did discuss that. We talked about that. And I think the feeling was um, that if we were to propose, if we were to city sort of create a whole new government structure for the city, have a, have a council manager form, which is considered best practice across the country, although according to the consultant it hasn't taken off in Massachusetts. Um, if we were to go down that route, there was a perception that that would be too much of a change. Um, uh, even though it might be best practice, it wouldn't be approved by the city. Again, to your point and to Mary Ann's point, I just want to point out that we made a very small number of changes. We just basically modernized and cleaned the language up. That was the purpose of this. We didn't get into, should we go to a manager? Should we get rid of preliminary elections? Should we? Should we? We didn't go down that path. We said, city council can take that up after we get the clean document. But the goal is to get this clean document there. And so we didn't propose a lot of, a lot of what came up on the floor. And there were some very good points that came up on the floor. But we felt those points are what needed the longer debate. When we're cleaning the document up, getting rid of the typos, getting rid of the handwritten scratched out, getting rid of Board of Aldermen, when we're doing those technical changes, we didn't feel we needed five more years to do this. We felt we could take the document we had and move forward and present it to the City Council. I agree. And those were the five things that we did that Gail highlighted in the beginning. 
okay, because we felt there was the consensus to move that forward. And we hope that that's part of what the debate is. Okay? And now I really, can I have two more minutes? I'll give you two more minutes. Two and a half. <laughs> okay, this is, city councilor here. this is just, I, no, yeah. no, just a man on the street. Look, um, the reason I may vote against it is the fact that I feel that in the city, um, that we really could benefit from professional leadership. When I mean professional leadership, I mean the sense of a person coming to work in that corner office that has dealt with ornery uh, department heads, people that build empires, um, things that, that are uncontro uncontrollable seemingly. Somebody who comes in, gets a salary, and can restore a little law and order to the city. And I think Amherst has benefited from such a system, and I think we would have been better off to go down that road. And thank you very much. Well, on November 7th, Mike, if we pass this charter, you can introduce that as an amendment. You can introduce the changing of the government to that effect yeah. because the process exists. And, and you'll have to do that whether it's a yes or no vote. So <laughs> you vote no, you'd be in the same place on November right. 7th either way. Okay, good. Thank so it, it's much. still, that is still an open, no matter which way the vote goes, that is an option that the city can choose. Very good, I appreciate all your work. Could I say one thing about the condition of the old charter, is that okay? Um, I just wanna be really clear that nobody um, is insulting anyone's intelligence about reading comprehension, um, but the old charter is really a puzzle. Um, you, you go along and then there's annotations and then those drop down, you look at footnotes that might be in a different document that refer to a law that then you have to look in that law and then you find out, well, that law has actually been um, overturned by a subsequent change. So it's, it's, what I like about the new charter, not to just talk about the substance, but the process is that I feel like it's much more accessible. And, and, and I'm not talking about it's, it's not like easy breezy. I'm saying that, you know, somebody could really look at it who had an idea for a substantive change that they wanted in their city. They could really read it. They could really get it. And they could craft something to change it. Whereas the other thing was so unwieldy, I, I think that, um, you know, it wasn't about, it wasn't that it included like thee and thou. I mean, it was that it, it contradicted itself and it required the reader to go to so many other documents that it's just, I think it was undemocratic. It was unwieldy, it was inaccessible. Are there any other comments, concerns? Good evening. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Steve Harrell, and I live at uh, 474 Elm Street, and I'm a businessman in downtown. Uh, I, several comments we heard tonight were that the ordinary citizen uh, doesn't get heard very much by the city government, and was, maybe that was applied also to your own committee, to the committee here tonight. Uh, I disagree with that. Um, I think that we are heard by our, by our city government. Um, I, uh, my notes aren't too organized here, but um, I've been very involved with the uh, issue with the school department, uh, and I won't go into that except that maybe some of you know it's re relative to the uh, start time at the high school that has to do with the teenager's uh, inability to get enough sleep according to their natural sleep patterns biologically. Uh, and the 7.30 start time is detrimental to their education and learning process. That's all I want to say about that particular thing, um, <laughs> except to, as it relates to um, involvement of the ordinary citizen in the government. Uh, we, some, our, our group uh, who was interested in this issue began four or five years ago to uh, press for it, and uh, initially we had very little response but we were persistent. And I think that if you are focused on a certain issue, you do have to be persistent. You have to reach out yourself. Um, eventually, um, the school committee, one by one, the members seemed to uh, 
listen to this and to have debates on it and to consider it seriously. Uh, recently, in the last year or so, uh, I have met with the uh, superintendent of schools, Brian Salser, uh, at least twice. Uh, we've had a meeting just three or four weeks ago with Mayor Narkowitz at City Hall, uh, with superintendent also, and several others. And uh, I've, got, I've gotten to know the school committee members very well, and a number of the uh, city council members also. Um, we've written letters to the Gazette, we've been on radio shows, and it is definitely the city government is responsive, responsive to us. We're near a decision, I hope. Uh, so I, I have uh, come to uh, at least one of your forums and spoken. Uh, it was, it was, it's been in the Gazette a lot, it's been on HMP radio that you were having the forums, and I, I cannot buy the argument that uh, the city government has not been open to uh, the ordinary citizen. So thank you for your work, and I definitely am going to vote uh, yes for the new charter, and I hope that other people do also. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Yes, sir. Fred Zimnock, Ward 3, and uh, basically my original question uh, concerned the um, adoption of a council management government. I think there are some really great advantages to having a professional person run the, uh, run the uh, city as opposed to a favorite son. But anyway, it's clear from what you said that you weren't making any large changes to the uh, to the uh, charter, so that probably didn't get fit in because you wanted to get it done. So the, the question now is, uh, let's say, for example, we did want to propose a city manager. Could you change the charter without waiting 10 years? Yes, oh, yeah. absolutely. And the process now, because as Maddie pointed out, the, the, and this goes back, I think, to Mary Ann's point, it really was, you would start reading the charter, and then it would refer to something, okay. the Board of Aldermen. But we, we, the Board of Aldermen would take you over here. So that, that charter was unreadable. Correct. A rabbinical scholar couldn't go through it. I, uh, <laughs> I mean, period. So you don't have to keep saying it. You couldn't read the damn thing, period. So now you have a clean charter. You have a clean process to amend the charter. So starting November 7th, all the folks in the, the audience that want to bring, bring amendments forward, Talk to your city councilor and say, we want this considered. Let's set up a commission. Let's talk about city manager versus elected mayor. Okay, second question. We have two documents. We have the city charter sitting here. We have the ordinances sitting here. Correct. If there is a conflict between the two, who wins? The charter. And the ordinances would be out of place. Bill, am I correct on that? Okay. So the charter wins hands down. The charter wins to begin with. But again, you might have to then change the ordinance. Okay, I can make one other point about that. And this is something that was, that was incorrect in the op-ed in the paper today. Uh, the old charter says, for example, uh, only the Board of Public Works can set water and sewer fees. We said this is not a charter matter. We're silent on the subject. If the council wants to, set water and sewer fees, they can. If they want to keep it status quo, they can. Um, there was a proposal that came to us in the process that we should mandate the council set the water and sewer fees, and we said, this is just, just not a charter issue. We tried in the charter to not micromanage a lot of stuff. Uh, so there wouldn't be a lot of conflicts with what, what council wanted to do or didn't want to do. I mean, it's, it's, it's like a constitution where you're, you're setting basic parameters. That was the, the thrust of the document. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I won't bore you with this. But, um, the, I'm Gene Tacey again, Board 7. Th these votes were absolutely all over the place from every city councilor on, on every item and amendment that had come up. Th they were 5 to 4, uh, 6 to 3, 8 to 1, 7 to 2. There was never a consensus on just exact on everything. And in the first meeting that I attended, uh, the judge said, I want you to look at, it's a gradient. And where would you be? Could you live with it? Uh, would you? And I use that 
all the time in the bidding process mm -hmm. when I go to bid openings and things such as that. And, and when you said it, a light went off that it was exactly what we're saying that everything, you're not going to get everything that you want in there. The water and sewer rates is not in the city charter. Mm -hmm. It's in the Board of Public Works charter. Mm -hmm. So anything that you do with that, it's not in the city charter. That's a sep separate issue Board of Public Works. My only argument at that point, with when it came up for discussion at your board, was that we did not, and I did not believe the city council. I know more about the water and sewer system in the city of Northampton than anybody in the city council. I've worked with it for better than 30 years. And I didn't believe that I had the expertise to set the water and sewer rates. And I still don't believe that. Uh, I might believe that if the Board of Public Works sets a rate and comes up with a scenario or a litany of why that rate is at that 9% increase, I might have the expertise to look at what they are proposing to do with that 9%, maybe build a new facility, you know, and I might that might be a political issue, but I do not want the water and sewer rates to become a political issue. Like, oh, Jesus, no, that can't go up 10%. And lo and behold, I get elected again. But uh, anyway, uh, I, as you know, I, I've had some pretty controversial issues that I have brought, and, and they've come to fruition. It took a couple of years. But they have, it, it's come around, and I got reelected. So anyway, maybe it might not happen again. Who knows? But I just want to thank the judge for the gradient and the, the grading, because it works out very well. And it worked out very well in this, too, because I used it at the council level. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes, front row? Oh, you have a hand, please. I just have a, a simple question. I'm just an old lady that could, could you never was very much involved in city politics. I was a nurse. I had enough trouble up there. Um, but this, the charter continues to allow the Department of Public Works to raise fees and taxes on sewer and water services without citizens' consent. We pay their salaries. I don't understand how that can just stand there. And many people in my age group are concerned about this. It's a unilateral decision. Look at it, under, the, under this charter, if you approve this charter, the council will be allowed, if they so choose, to overrule the DPW, change, their, change the DPW charter so they can't do it anymore, it has to be the council, they would have the ability to do that. As Jean Tacey said, they may not want to. <laughs> they may not feel they don't have the expertise to do it. Mm -hmm. But we're we're removing the, the constitutional roadblock that prevents them from getting involved and saying it's just not not a, not a city charter matter. It's a council matter. If they want it to be a political decision or or be an expertise decision by the DPW, voting for this charter frees up the council to get involved if they want to. But but can I just clarify for you that uh, that the thing that you're concerned about is the way the old charter stands right now. Anyway, I mean it's. This has been a hundred and how many years, and now you've rushed in five months to. But we haven't. That we know, have not I, changed. That that has. That's what it says here. That it, the new wrong. charter continues that, to allow. Not that's that that's is wrong. That's Mario was wrong when he wrote that. Oh, so this this is doesn't that, even. Count. That's an error. And and. So, go. You have a mic. Go ahead. Yeah. But just to clarify, that the two documents are the same on that. Have this person finish first. Well, I'm. I really have nothing else to say. I think that. Um, you people know a lot more about what's happening, um, and I'm sure there's a lot of opposition to some of this, for, speaking for my age group, the elderly, and uh, the Board of Public Works or Department of Public Works has certainly been in the paper a lot these last few months, and uh, I think we are beginning to realize we better open our eyes or we won't be able to afford to live here. Quite simply. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mr. Roth? Look, I, I don't want to be a uh, claim to be an expert on this uh, issue. Uh, I was actually told by Gene originally that he, uh, he didn't want the charter, the new charter, to allow citizens uh, and the city council to have an impact on the vote for the uh, for the for the uh, water for the water rates, and that was that was my belief. Uh, when I read the charter itself, uh, I think uh, <coughs> Article Article Six, administrative organization. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, now now I'm told that the city will have the ability to uh, through through changing an ordinance to take away the rights of the DPW to set the water rates. But I think the important thing here is. Gene, Gene is, you know, I love Gene. He, I'm friends with him. He's a great guy. He's an honest guy. He's a smart guy and a hard worker. Um, so when Gene says, uh, you know, when Gene, Gene's perfectly honest, he said, look, I wouldn't want to oppose a 10% a, a, a increase. I, I wouldn't want to vote for a 10% increase because I might not get elected. And that's why he said he wanted the charter to stay as it was because he was advised that, that, um, if people were allowed to elect, to set, the, if the city council was allowed to set the rates for the for water fees, then there would never be an increase, and you wouldn't be able to fund, to fund the uh, sewer and water department. So that was the reason for it. But again, my my problem always all along the line is the, the charter tilts towards a distrust of the people, whether it's having the recall, whether it's uh, insisting on four-year terms. And maybe, maybe the case here with the, with the water department, maybe it's shifted a little. I know Gene says to me, that's late breaking news, that there's something they can do in the charter to perhaps prevent that from happening. But, but certainly in the, in the, in the debate, uh, the reasoning was for not having it very clear, setting it out very straight in the charter, that the DPW wouldn't be able to set the water rates. The reason for that was because, again, a distrust of the people. And I believe that the people, if they know, if they understand, if you have trust in them, if you, if you stop thinking you're so right all the time, and maybe, maybe you don't feel that way, but, I, but that's how I perceive it. The biggest idiot in the world is an expert on something. And if you open up the government, and it's, it's, it's a, approachable by ordinary citizens, when you hit their area of expertise, and they're welcome in there, even though they don't know the first thing about how government works, we'll have a better government. We'll have a great government. The future is full of promise. Science can make life wonderful for all of us if we listen to each other. And I just feel that by making it a four-year term, not allowing uh, the, the vote, the, the recall election, you're basically diminishing people's voice. And, and that's not needed, because the people are good, the people are wise collectively. If, if you want to have the council set water and sewer fees, vote yes for the charter, then elect councillors who want to do that. You'll be able to do that if you vote yes for That's the charter. Right. That's right. The current charter does not allow you to do that. The new charter would allow you to petition the council to control water and sewer fees. Just, can we just say that one more time, time. because there's confusion yeah. here. Yeah. Todd, one more time. The current, charter does, the current charter does not allow the council to vote on water and sewer fees. The new charter would allow the council to vote and, and approve water and sewer fees if they so choose. Right. It's a little convoluted. They have to do it in a certain, uh, a certain restricted period of time. It's not clear that they, ha that they necessarily will. These are promises. I, we were told at the last election that don't worry, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have you, you write a petition. And that is a big thing because w by locking out people, not allowing them to write down what they want to say and having it made it part of the uh, city council debates, there is no way they're totally dependent on committees. It's a really big thing. And, um, but, you know. Well, I know, the, I know, the, I know the process is messy. I just want to clarify, a new charter would allow citizens to petition maybe, the maybe, council. Maybe, maybe. If you, you know, Article 6 says you cannot take away uh, their rights that are, that are given to them as organized by the city agency. It, it basically says you can't take away uh, the rights of an organization uh, within within the city as assigned to it by by ordinances. It, it says you can't take it away. Maybe you can. I think that's being debated, but it's hardly so open and shut. I would. I, I think you might get some debates on that. 
Um, but but the point, but the but the important point from your perspective, where you want the power to be with the people, is that the new charter allows the city council, who are the people, they are elected by the people, to make that choice of whether or not they're going to get involved with setting water and sewer rates. So it so the new charter puts the power right where you want it. It's not 100 percent, you know, you, you're saying that and I'm saying, are you hearing what I'm saying? I that, am. That, that may well be the case, but this is late breaking news and no. I don't think it's been sorted it's out. It's just, I think it's just been misunderstood news because yeah, that's course. what's been in, in this document. I, I, I'm not saying by no, you. No, look, I'm you're, saying it's, you're much cleverer than I am. No, I'm no, no, sure. Mr. Roth, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it's a very complicated issue. It was a complicated issue to talk about in our committee. It was a complicated issue to put down on paper. So I'm not, I just reread the review of it here and was confused and had to say to myself, wait a second, what is accurate about the new charter? And what we've just now clarified is what's accurate about the new charter. You haven't addressed the articles themselves, specifically the wording and how it will be done. I'm going by what Gene told me. I trust in Gene. Gene said, Gene said to me it wasn't even supposed to be out in public. I just spoke to him yesterday about this. He says this is something we're working on. We think it, we, we, we think it'll go. And, and it may well. And that would be a good thing. Look, there's good things in this charter. But the fundamental thing is four years, no way, no, no voter <coughs> recall, no way. And, uh, and, and, the, and the mayor will be able to influence the elections. He'll sit out every two years when you have city council elections. He'll have his thumb on the scale. He will be there pushing for his people, supporting his position. If you don't agree with the mayor and you're running for city council, uh-uh, you got a tough, you got a tougher course uh, to, to run now. So that's also going to add more, uh, more power to the mayor. These things should have been discussed, but they weren't discussed because you've got one set of views up there. There's no, you're all yes. Where's the no? Sure, I'm speaking up here, ad-libbing. But it's an imbalance. It was an imbalance from the beginning, and it's an imbalance in the way government goes. Make it more open, please. Thank you. Ms. Wright. Um, uh, first of all, in the order of dissent of uh, what trumps what, Mass General Law trumps Correct. the charter. When Mass General Law actually, in the, our state government and Commonwealth government, its infinite wisdom, decided that instead of taxes, which are the council gets to weigh in on and gets to speak to. They wouldn't raise taxes. They would instead create, we created a cap of two and a half percent. But the fact is that we still needed water. We still needed stormwater management systems and things like that. So they said, well, let's create this kind of fee. We won't call it a tax. We'll call it a fee. And, and I agree. And I agree with actually everything that's been asserted here that that created another insulating layer between the deliberative body and the representative body and the public's voice on these particular issues. Um, and it is, it is actually, it's part of the frustration. If you, if you actually want to spend the time and possibly induce coma, you can watch the council meetings and see that this is, this is an ongoing fight that we've ha we deal with ourselves. Like Councilor Tacey was referring to it. This is, this is, this is tough because we are actually being prescribed by the state. The state is mandating that we have to, for instance, instill $100 million, projected $100 million expense in fixing our stormwater management system. They're saying that we have to do that. We, we, don't, we get a when bit of a, uh, well, that's what we're trying to determine. We, in fact, is why we've, in fact, in the interest in conducting things in the ways of best practices, we actually started convening public comment and informational meetings similar to this and there's more to come about the, the fees that are looming for us. Because the, and the reason we did that was we were frustrated. We were frustrated as a representative body because we didn't have much of a say in the matter. And, and consequently, our constituents were also frustrated, the frustration that you're hearing to some extent. Getting back to the charter, as things <coughs> stand now, that insulation remains much thicker. I take issue with what was asserted here that it is actually creating this network, a system that was done by a bunch of bobblehead dolls. They, these, every one of these people had fights with each other. <laughs> there, was, there was no yeses. There was, well, maybes, or no, you're crazy, or whatever. But they actually came because they were adults, and they understood that their mission and their charge 
was to, their responsibility was to draft and create a document that reflected the, the disposition and the, uh, the, the sentiments of the city, they did it very responsibly. I really, I can't emphasize how much of an exception I take to the assertions that, that you've heard tonight. It just, it makes me want to spit tax. But my concern is in the existing document, the existing antique creaking document, we are actually have not much of a buy or leave when it comes to issues around water rates and fees and sewer fees. We can complain about it just like you and maybe we might carry a little more weight because we're elected officials. The people who actually deliberate on that body are good and thoughtful people. They're not elected, however. They're not elected. They're appointed, but they're all thoughtful people. I'm not su suggesting for a moment that any of these people are uh, not committed and devoted citizens. And they're accessible by the, the public. The public can make and plead their case to them, and they frequently do. Councilor Tacey spends more time at those meetings than, uh, than, than most members. Um, it's, in, and I think on the larger point, the thing that I really take issue with is the insinuation or the implication that there is this group bent on divesting the public of their voice. And that really makes me crazy. Because I think to a person here, everyone has been dedicated to that very one mission. Um, I don't have ambitions. As I would clearly state, I don't want to be mayor. I'm not even sure I want to be a councilor again. But the fact is, is that I ran, and every other councilor who ran with me ran for the same reason. I'm sure of that, because that was, you know, I see that reflected in the way they conduct business was to represent, they felt that they had something to offer their community, and to represent their community ably, and uh, to conduct the business of the city that we're charged with in a good and fair manner. And we really do, the reason I'm pushing for this charter personally, this goes towards that end. Is it, it's not a fait accompli, it's not a done deal. I don't think, uh, in point of fact, it's absolutely impossible to make a, an actual decision or a law or a rule that would meet the agreement of everybody. I mean, there's, that's, that's, we, we, would be, we would be stagnant if we had to wait for everyone to say, oh, okay, but we're a republic. We're representative of majority rule. And we, and this document codifies that, clarifies that, and makes it work. And so once again, I mean, and, and then, but when all said and done, the, the state constitution trumps the city charter and uh, mass general law trumps us. So mass general law actually requires us to do some things that we might not do, we might not establish in this charter or any charter. So, so point, point of clarification, am I wrong? No. <laughs> uh, it, no. It, it's, it's not a state law matter that DPW sets the fees? The, the Mass General Law established enterprise funds and the rules in which those are established. And, and those are the rules that we would have to defer to ultimately. But the fact is, I think contained therein is the option, at least, for some oversight by council. Uh, so, so, so the fact is, is that uh, we can't, unless we're prepared to start tonight drafting the new constitution of the state, of the commonwealth, and I, I, I nominate Dave Stevens to lead. Oh. <laughs> but I mean, there are, we have to understand that the, there, are, there are limitations to what we can and cannot do, even, even as this charter is defined. There are some limitations that are, that are prescribed by state law, and then what trumps state law in many cases is federal law. Again, I think this is a clear example of what we found in the charter over the 130 years. Things were put into it that shouldn't have been in it, and um, we wanted to streamline it. This is a, obviously a hot button issue, the, the rate fees for uh, water and sewer. It's not a charter issue, okay? It might be a city council issue and a BPW issue, but it's not a charter issue. And what we're trying to put forward is the charter talks about do we have a mayor or a city manager? Do we have city councilors or aldermen? Do we have elections in November? Do we have elections in May? That, that other part of it, setting the fees, who sets the fees, that is not in the charter. So I just want to separate that out. If you, if you have issues with that, that, bring it up to your city council because they have the ability November 7th to decide, after November 6th to decide this. 
Yeah, please. Thank you. I spent a lengthy time today <laughs> in the city clerk's office. And, and I know with Councilor Owen Freeman Daniels, we talked about the store rates and so forth. If you do look in the new charter, okay, section 11 dash six, section 11 dash seven, it does open the doors, mm -hmm. which gives the mayor the authority, which he does not have now, and none of us counselors don't have any authority to go ahead and control the sewer and water rates or anything coming out of that Board of Public Works. To me, this is the most important issue here in this charter is because it's opening the doors for the fees. Because we should have the rights as counselors to say to the Board of Public Works, 9% on a sewer and water bill, 9% on, on the sewer bill in the water, 9%, 18%. People cannot afford to continuously do that in this city. So we would have, by ordinance, the rights to say to them, we want to make a compromise. We don't want the 9% or the 9%. How about if we do 5%? You know, that's what this is all about. It's going to open the doors where the mayor will be able to go ahead and form a sewer commission and open the doors and hopefully he'll come into city council with an ordinance and then we can have a full debate on it. So I'm for this charter 100%. Thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to uh, to uh, continue a little bit about what Mary Lamar said and Bill Dwight, and that is, uh, I think Bill said that the enterprise fund is purely an MGL question, and once the, you adopt it, enterprise fund and mass general law takes over. Uh, 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 just to clarify, the mass general law established enterprise funds established the allowance. And we'll still have control over the rates in the enterprise fund? The mayor will have control of the rates in the enterprise fund? The, we, to, to this extent, as the charter is being defined now, yeah, okay. there will be more input on that. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other comment? Gene, please. <laughs> It's hard not to get into the political part of all this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's, 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 the enterprise funds now, it is stated, it is for the collection and the disbursement of the fund. And period. It's all it's about. And it says that those funds will be used to support the entity from which they are derived and none other. And then it goes into 35 pages or 37 pages of direct and indirect costs. So. That's where I draw the line. That, that's where I, I can't get involved in it. You know, I, they can do what they want with enterprise funds. You can't. There would be a hard, you would have a hard time spending 50% of the money that you collect on water and sewer rates to build a new facility. Mm -hmm. That would not be allowed. The state would jump in and they would say no. The Attorney General would say no, you can't do that. The Department of Revenue would say no. They would all get involved in it. Um, but. We talked about, uh, and Bill talked about, we find ourselves now trying to fund municipal government because the state is consistent. They are very, very consistent getting out of the local aid business. They are eliminating funds to cities and towns. So these user fees are a necessary evil at some point. You know, somehow you have to pay for this stuff that they and they tell you, we're not going to give you any money for it this year, but you are required mm -hmm. to maintain this or update this. And so it, I was probably the most frequent visitor to city council long before I got elected for 30 years. And it's, I was never naive. I never really thought that the city had all kinds of money that they were just weren't spending and they weren't spending it where I thought they should. But, and I, and I always voiced my opinion on it. But then once you actually when you're sitting there and you have to try and, especially in the Finance Committee, figure out just exactly how the Christ you're going to make all of this work. Mm -hmm. 
it gets very, very difficult. And that's why I appreciate it. And it's all volunteer. I mean, a $300 check I get every month doesn't cover gas or office expenses. I spent $179 on an ink cartridge for my copying machine the day before yesterday. And I haven't got that $300 yet this month. That doesn't come to the end. But it doesn't cover gas. And heaven forbid you even try to throw your time into it. But uh, it's something that, that you feel passionate about. So you do it. And I'll do it until they throw me out. But anyway, uh, like the police station, I, I, I don't try to tell anybody how to vote anything. You know, you vote what you think you can vote. You vote what you, you vote your pocket. Can you afford this? Can you not? And the vote will come out just exactly like it will come out. And good luck, everybody. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? No, I'd like to thank the, uh, the panel for being here today. Uh, great job. Oh. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's OK. Hi. Ignore you, my bad. That's okay. Uh, my name's Blue Duvall, and I'm a school committee member at large. And um, I support the charter mostly. What I'm wondering is, um, is there, has there been something where it's highlighted or the changes are actually highlighted? Because when I'm reading through it, there's a lot to read through and to also be, have it to be comparative to the others. And I have been following the city council meetings and I have followed a lot of the ideas. Um, is there something, is there a document there's, that says a, these are the changes? There's a bullet point list on the city website at northamptonma.gov that's linked on the homepage. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a website that we've created called charteryes.blogspot. Right, I've been on that. We've got highlights some of the major changes there. Okay. And there's also an executive summary document that we gave to the city council in March that's linked on that Charter Yes website. Uh, and there's also a few videos that we've created for NCTV that highlights some of those changes as well. So we go to NorthamptonTV.org. Remember that correctly? You can, you can see some of those changes there. Okay. And Northampton TV will be putting up these blog um, uh, web addresses for the people who are listening home or are scrambling now trying to, to listen to what he said. But we'll put those up there so you can go and, and spend the next couple of weeks just taking a look at those to see. Right. Well, Somebody here earlier said um, about people showing up, and one of our city councilors the other night stated that at his at the council meeting stated that on the first reading of an issue, he listened to the people that came up and spoke about it, but he heard quote heard more um, when they didn't show up. I don't think it's apathy that keeps people away. I think that it's not understanding. I think that it's not understanding how it affects them. I didn't understand how any of this affected me. And I'm not talking just as a school committee member because I don't understand why, and this is a, a big point of why um, the school committee, who's not a member, is not allowed to work for the school department, now can no longer work for the city also. I mean, we had Jim Dostal, who was here for 18, 20 years, whatever. He was there for quite a long time. I don't understand why that had to go to um, that way at all. And also for the um, two-year terms. Mine is a two-year term, so I'm fine with that. But the four-year terms, I think that there needs to be some continuity. And we've had issues like the late start time that Steve was talking about. And I think that there needs to be people who can make decisions not based on whether or not they're going to be elected next year or not. I think that they need to make decisions. And sometimes I think that when you have a two-year position, which is why I do support the mayor for a four-year position, that you're continually looking at the next election period. And I think that that can motivate some people. Um, but I do object to um, the limiting of the school committee members from working for the city. There, I do understand the school department because there may be a conflict of interest there, but for the city, I, I don't think that that's right. And the other question that I had is that there are people that can come and change this and make these changes, and that there are five changes. Um, I think that it would have been a better system had we changed the language and just changed the language and then introduced the changes after the language had been changed. Because right now, it's all meshed together, and I think that it would have had a lot more clarity had we said, this is just alderman to count. I mean, that is understandable. And the true issues would really come out as far as what was changed and instead of it being just put in between everything. I am going to look at the complete charter. Um, and I basically approve 
it. And I want to thank all of you for doing all this work because I've been following it on the TV, on the council, and the, the meetings and everything. And I do know that you put a lot of work into it. But how did you come up with the decision that after 130 years that a school committee member now can no longer work for the city government either? How? That was part of the the recommendation from the McCormick Institute, the people who came here as a, um, a process. And I would have to talk to Steve McGoldrick specifically as to why that recommendation was, because I don't want to mislead you on camera, you know, as to what that is. Right. But I can get you his phone number, Blue, and you can talk to him about it, because that was just one of those things that he said, this is the way, you know, this is the part we have to accept. So we did. Just to sort of add to that, I again, I, I would talk to Stephen ab about that just to clarify, but I think it had to do with patronage laws. Um, mm -hmm. There was a lot of abuse 100 years ago where people would get appointed uh, or they'd leave office and then take another job with the city, and um, some laws came through in the state and some best practices came through that just tried to put sort of a real Chinese firewall between that rotating door of... So in 130 years, has that really been an issue for the school committee member to overstep that boundary? I, I can just, I mean, Jimmy Dostal, he was wonderful. He was a wonderful um, council, a committee member, and yet he worked for the city. And, and I don't understand where there would have been conflict. And I don't understand, is it based on conflict or just, okay, he said it, so we're just going to change it now? I, I just want to say one thing, because I think you bring up a good point, which is that while we were working on it, we were really urged not to think about the current um, people that would be uh, affected or like we weren't supposed to be making changes to fix little problems that we didn't like politically or so you're bringing up an example of the person you know who sounds like the exception that makes the rule do you know what i'm saying so there has so been we other were, so so he's the exception and, and stating that he's the exception so there are other people and other reasons why what this we're is saying is, is that we were really charged with looking at something that was best practices for the next you know 100 years out and that we we were not supposed to be focusing on um you know, conduct of individuals. I understand that, and I understand that, and, and why with the four-year term for the mayor, et cetera. But with 130 years, it would seem that you would have the history of whether or not that is actually a risk. And I think that I don't work for the city. I don't have plan on working for the city. It doesn't affect me personally. But I think it, it's, it's just, once again, limiting who we can have out there running and who will be representing people. And unless there has been a problem in 130 years, I think that that's a, 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 a tested to the judge. I, I just, I think, I'm not certain, and, and it, I, I agree with everybody who says you should check with Steve, um, the consultant, but um, I, don't, I don't think he was giving us that directive based on Northampton history. I, I don't think that he, that even occurred to him. I think he was giving us that directive based on his knowledge of modern government and best practices um, I understand across that, the state. but the, the, the charter has been being stated and touted as we are just changing the language. It keeps saying that, mm -hmm. and yet there are changes, and that's a change. That is a change. It is. I, I mean, I, that's a change that, that I think is. that um, overstepped the boundaries of, of where it should have been. I think that that too should have been brought into the like the compensation brought into committee if that was something that needed to be done. As a school committee member, we weren't given. I mean, I think there should have been more. Um, we weren't given the charter. We weren't given the, the, how it would affect us or, or any of it, not just us, but just our place in government and government's place in our lives, like the mayor and, and, and availability and all of that. Well, the, 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 the school committee, we had a whole night that you guys were invited yeah, to attend. Yeah, Pick came and she was very vocal about what would yeah. work. Oh, uh, you guys we, don't have my right address, I'm sure. We had the, the city council, we had it. the school committee, we asked for former and current, we had former when was uh, that? and current mayors were there. December. Uh, it was in December because, again, we wanted to hear from the people who actually had to implement the laws and do the laws how this impacted them and what they thought. And that's why. Did you have good? Re I wasn't a member at the time. Did you have good oh, representation? Uh, that's uh, the, the vice chair, Stephanie Pick, was there. Just her? Yes. Yeah. But they were all invited. A lot of. Oh, I'm sure they were. I'm not saying that they weren't. But um, I don't know. I just think that you shouldn't be changing the term for it. I think that there's, there's definite positives with keeping four years mm -hmm. and um, 
some of them is the, the continuity of issues. We can go back to the four-year term if you so choose. If, if we say, hey, this is not working out this way or we're having trouble recruiting people this way, again, with the new charter, you can, you can go back to a four-year term if you so choose. But if we were to change the language, why didn't we put it in the other way of if you so choose, we'll change it to you know, it will, it will be changed felt, as opposed felt, to keeping it the same. Uh, again, well, we heard good testimony that there is so much, um, there's so few even contested elections in the um, school committee, as as I'm sure you know, um, that, uh, that, cons that this idea of consistency is sort of a red herring because people get on the school committee and they stay and stay. So whether they have a two-year term or a four-year term, that's the testimony that we heard from elected officials and from members of the public. We also heard that some people had uh, concerns about supporting a four-year term or going for a four-year term, especially since a lot of our school committee people have children, to say, okay, for the next four years I'm going to be on this committee. So they actually said, how about a two-year term? Then I'm only having to make that two-year commitment as opposed to a four-year commitment. So we heard opinions on all sides of that issue. We ended up saying, let's just make it uniform that all of the representative electeds city council and school committee are all two years. And people might not, might not know this, though the way it stands now is the at-large school committee members are two years. The ward school committee members are four years. And the odd wards are up for election in one municipal election, and the even wards are up the, the two years after that. They're, they're staggered. Uh, and so that whole process is very convoluted and confusing to folks, and I think that contributes to uh, a lack of competition for the positions and a lack of knowledge by the public when these elections even take place. You know what? They expected hundreds of people. I'm not sure that it's it's whether or not they know or that they're taking place or not taking place. I'm thinking more that they don't want to be involved. And I think that your argument for having it to be four years, uh, two years versus four with the people and the kids in the schools and everything else, I think that people who serve on the committee shouldn't just serve the, because their kids are in the school necessarily and it be about their kids. We're supposed to be there to represent everybody. So to come in and say, well, they're only going to be two years, so that's a lot less burden on them. Uh, be, so that when their kids out of there, they can, I mean, we, we have more responsibility than just deciding what's happening right now with my fifth grader. You know, it, it's not, I'm not there because of my fifth grader. I'm there because of other, other inequities and other help that they need. I mean, I mean, the hope here is that this is going to open up the committee, that more people are going to choose to run. I hope so, but I'm, what I'm hoping uh, that doesn't happen is that we have a hot, to a hot ticket, you know, hot button issue right before an election. Nobody wants to touch it because everybody's up for it, and it can just come in and do like Amherst does and just keeps changing boards, like on mass. And I don't think that that is good for our schools. I, I don't. I just think that that. I mean, these it could these, be these are the really same disruptive. Exact, these are the same exact questions that come up with the with the mayor term issue. Uh, and, you know, it, this is all a question of balance. Uh, how do you balance um, uh, accountability and ability to execute uh, ideas? Uh, and, you know, the balance we tried to strike was to, to go the way for the mayor, but balance that with two years for the council and the school committee. Uh, it council was already two years. Right. right. So, we're, but, we're, but, we're, but it wasn't something that you did. What I'm saying is, first of all, if you had just changed the language and voted on changing the language, then we could go through. But now you're saying we're going to change it, make it, and if you want to change it back, we have to go through in a minute. Well, and I just think I mean, that we this, should have changed it I mean, in the first This point. is an idea being put forth, which the public, if, 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 if those two ideas are enough to say the charter is no good, obviously the public can <coughs> reject the idea and vote no. Uh, you know, these were the considerations that we that we weighed. Right. Um, we're hoping to increase competition for those elections and hoping to balance uh, and balance that with giving the mayor a little bit more more leg room. Uh, hoping that would that would achieve the dual objective of accountability and ability to execute. Uh, if we find in practice that I mean, if you had a situation where you're having repeated turnover at school committee. Uh, lacking institutional knowledge having you know uh, sloppy budgeting after that. Obviously, there's going to be a groundswell to go to, to change it again. Uh, and as, and I'm not as, concerned about that, nor do I really think that that's going to happen. I mean, they're all of a sudden going to get sloppy because it's two years. My concern more is that there be an issue that is out there being dealt with and that the voters' response to that issue is let's get rid of people as opposed to dealing with the issue. Mm -hmm. And I just think that that's dangerous for the whole board because a lot of them are hot topics now. Mm -hmm. It won't be a hot topic in three months or six months. And yet, so I'm just afraid that before 
before terms come up, because it would be all the time, that everybody is a little bit more wishy-washy than already trying to get them to make a commitment to something. That's all. Valid point. So Valid I. point, yeah. So, and I do think that uh, that um, a lot more people care. I do wish there was something that was distributed to people that, I mean, the kids at school, that right there, you get a lot of kids, um, people taking it home to the paper that said, this is what it was and this is what it is. Because a lot of what the charter touts itself as being is just changing the language, when in effect it's not. It's changing important important parts. And, and I do think that it should have just gotten together to change the language and modify the language and modernize the language um, and then had amendments as they set forward to this. So anyway, thank you very much for all the time that you've put into it. Thank you. Well, Mark, can you just clarify, Mark served on the committee before the drafting committee, which reviewed, that was the Charter Review Committee, and you addressed that issue, whether we should just sort of redo the language of the old charter or draft a new charter. So that was a, that, that was a decision made before we even were created. We were, we were told to draft, sit down and draft a new charter. That was our instruction. But Mark served on an earlier committee. And in fact, I had written a minority report to that committee suggesting that they just start with just changing the language and then hold a series of forums with pros and cons on each of these more substantive changes. On um, each on issue, because right now, uh, like on each said, issue. If, we, if we vote, I mean, I would like to vote no the, based on the school committee, but yes, based on the other things. I think and it should have been we would have, I hope we would have had a debate on that, but, but we would have been able to go and establish, well, which of these is a killer item, and the more important thing right now is to bring the charter up to contemporary language. But, you know, I did... That was, as I mentioned, the minority view. Uh, and I'm happy to have had the opportunity to serve on the drafting committee as well, because I was still interested in, in making the changes. The debate about these substantive issues, though, was the focal point of the drafting committee. And we did go through all of these things, and I think we did it in a serious and, and thoughtful manner with a lot of public input. It is um, perhaps, uh, you know, by tying everything together, you do risk the chance that you won't make that first objective of getting the changes. But I think that this was the suggestion, uh, this was the approach that the city took, this was the uh, consistent with the view of the McCormick Center um, at University of Massachusetts about how to go about doing this. This was the sense of our legislatures in doing this, and some of the state representatives for getting the process going expeditiously. Um, and this is what we have. If, if I can just add a, a process piece that maybe I neglected to say in the beginning. We held some hearings, and we came up with about nine hot-button issues, okay? Um, and what happened was each one of the members of the, the nine, the people who aren't here, took the leadership in one of those areas, and we held a public forum on that area. And, you know, people were coming, and they wanted to talk about another agenda. I said, no, you're only talking about this. Talk about whether you want four or no or two. Talk about whether you want the gavel in the hand of the mayor or the city council president. And we really, I mean, I it was hard to kind of keep some people in line to say this is what you're talking about. Come back to another meeting if you want to talk about something else, but this is what you're talking about. And each of these people took us through that process. They gave us a little bit of history. Other, we did looked at comparable towns, you know, other cities in, in, that are, have mayorships that are about our size. Do they have an elected city clerk or not elected city clerk? We went through all those issues. And in the end, we only chose, we were really, um, we, we went down to the, this, that handful that Gail read of changes because we, our goal was to clean the language up. Okay. Okay. But the consensus and the drive and the, the, what we heard from the public was that those five issues needed to be included. So we included them. Now, it wasn't a unanimous, and when it went to city council, it wasn't unanimous. But the whole point, it was vetted the whole way through that it was like, okay, let's talk about now the two and four of the mayorship. And there was a lot of public debate on that, on that issue, and people came forward. Ultimately, this group uh, recommended four. Ultimately, the city council on two separate votes agreed with that. So it, we, we went through a, a very long process to get to those handful of changes. Mm -hmm. We didn't just pick five out of the hat and say, let's go with it. We rejected, for instance, the election of a city clerk. I ask you, why would a city clerk be the only department head that is elected, not appointed? Simple question to put out there for people. A lot of cities our size have it that way, but ultimately after the debate, after Wendy Mazza got up and spoke articulately about keeping it elected, this body agreed 
to keep it an elected position. So we, we went through some hot button issues. Some of them we said, mm, we're not going to go there. Um, the, a couple other things was the, the salary piece that was brought up about uh, building in salary compensation. That was a recommendation from uh, Steve McGoldrick. We said, no, let's set up a separate commission to do that. There was uh, some large discussion about preliminary elections and non-preliminary elections. We said, we're not going to go there because it's a hot issue. Let's send that off to a commission because we need a longer period of time to fully vet that concept. Do we have a preliminary election? Do we not? <coughs> do we have instant? excuse me, instant runoff, um, which is a, another uh, election uh, tool that's being used across the country. So again, this document is to clean up for no on November 6th. On November 7th, those changes, those additions, those uh, things we want to look at, let's put them back on the table. Let's start going down and taking a look at the commission on the elections. Let's take a, uh, the commission on the salaries and compensation for elected officials. Let's go down that path, but we have to get past November 6th or we're back at square one. We go all the way back to 1887 or whenever we created this thing to, to the way that the, the, we're governed with this convoluted document, as you pointed out, that you have trouble reading because it, it bounces between here and here and it's, I brought in as one of my examples to the city council was my phone book that I've had with my husband for 28 years and it's got little pieces of paper in it and it's got envelopes and it's got you know scribbled outs it's got you know people in it that don't, aren't even with us anymore that's what the charter represented to me it's this, it's this document that is very difficult to follow because it contradicts itself you have to you have to go here and then you have to go over here and it's like no we want something you can read and you you get it so we don't have to get confused by it. So that's the goal of November 6th, a clean document. And I then got that. <laughs> but you know when the president gets something on his desk and it's got something in there that he has to veto, and if he does, it's going to veto everything. It kind of feels like this is all being shoved in, and as opposed to the original intent was to clean up the language and make it more readable. And if it was like that, then I think we would also have more input from people because they would say, okay, this is what's readable, this is what is, and now this is what's changing. And it would be issue by issue as opposed to putting them all together because, as you say, you're here to clean up the language and make it more readable. That's great. Mm -hmm. But you also, not you personally, but someone along the way decided that let's also make some new changes to it as opposed to making amendments later on and now it's we have to do it in reverse well it's there now you have to go back and undo it i understand and i see that that i just think that it should have been the language should have been cleaned up and clear and so everybody was on the same page in the first place and then you start to focus on the ideas and the changes and whether or not that they are there as they come up mm -hmm. or even have a committee waiting on november 7th of okay yay now this is the next thing that's going to happen now that it's a clean now that it's clean to look at but it really feels kind of like certain things are getting like slid past because let's say I believe in four out of the five changes that you did. Now where do I vote? I have to look at, at this and it's not necessarily, the issues are not tied in as far as necessities go. They don't need to be addressed right now. They've been chosen to be addressed right now. And I think that if, if it just feels like they've all been put there together and it's like take it all or leave it. And I'd like to take it most, you know, so. And if it had been a series of forms, I would have been there afterwards to say, okay, this is what we're going to do if that so interested me. And if it didn't interest me, then that issue I wouldn't have been here for. Or I already agreed with the basic. So we did have the form. We did have a series of forms. Have, I understand that, but all to fit right back into the language change. So I have to now, you have a series of forms, and I agree with most of them, but not all of them, and yet I'm going to have to vote on a whole package when the original intent was to change the language. Well, let me just, just, let me just clarify. There way. was no option just to clear up the language. The old charter okay. was incomplete. It wasn't a matter of just sort of redrafting it, putting it in a word processor, and, and making the, the language modern. There were a lot of issues that just weren't in the old charter, like su succession of the mayor. Um, there, were a number of, there were a number of issues that the government, that the state required us. If you're going to redo a charter, you've got to do it in a modern way, okay. which meant revisiting a lot of issues that weren't even in the old charter. So but this, we did have the issue of, of a two-year term, right, for the mayor. I mean, No, we, we could have. We could have adopted a new charter with the same terms for the school committee with the mayor. But we were advised that, I guess, um, uh, 
Bill Goggins was, uh, I mean, uh, Patrick, Pat, Pat, Goggins. Pat, Patrick Goggins came, and he had been involved in the 70s or the 80s with the previous turn. And he basically said, you get one bite at this apple. Um, so, so that's make sure why you I do it right and don't overstep. Just mm -hmm. look at the changes that need to be made. And we decided, as, as, as Steve said, the, the five sort of key issues. That we heard from the public about. Yeah, we got a lot of input. And we, we, we tried to take oh, I know you did, and I know it's been happening for a long period of time, but what I said is, is people don't have the, a, a clear document from which to look and, and judge. That's, I mean, not to compare. And I also think it would be nice to have, like our church went through a charter change, and when it did, we had all what the old things said, and right next to it was the changes, was in italics what it was changing to. So you can say, oh, this is changing from this, as opposed to looking through it all. And the website does have things highlighted, but it's still really difficult to go through and have it have some sort of continuity. And I just, I don't like how everything was just slid in, and I really disagree with um, limiting school um, school committee members from being able to work for the city. Uh, I, I don't at this point, it. I think I think we need to. If, if anyone else has anything to no. say, or, That's or it. we need to, to move on a little bit. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Bill. Sorry. Uh, please. One last comment. By all means. One last comment. <laughs> when you draft this charter. It, it doesn't just go to the city council. It has to go to the state for review. Right. And there's a reason for that. And I have found this out on several occasions, especially in the last few months, as I find things in our code or in our charter that I have brought to the mayor's uh, attention, things that I would like to have looked at or done a little bit differently. And he says, he looks at it and he says, Jesus, you know, it's pretty good. Well, let's look into it a little bit. And then... Uh, we discuss it back and forth, and we spent days on one particular issue, and then we sent it off to the city solicitor. And 10 days later, this, he comes back to us and says, well, you're right. It's all over in our charter. It's in our code. It's, it's everywhere in our city documentation that has been around forever because we keep changing it. But state law changes. Yes. So anyway, all of this work that we had done for a week and a half was no good because the state had passed a law that supersedes everything that is in our our documentation. So, needless to say, you can't write up a charter and just bring it to the city council and pass it. It has to go for review because a lot of things have happened in the state level that don't allow for the things that are in our current charter. So, uh, actually, a, a rewriting of the old document, I think, would have been fruitless. Thank you. I have a, just a question that just requires a yes/no answer. Okay. Uh, we just elected a mayor. Now, if we pass this charter now, does he become a no. four-year mayor? No. Okay. No. The the changes involving with the elections. Again, what the constitution does it sets your elections. The charter sets your elections won't take place until the next openings. So in 2013, we are up for a mayoral race. That's when we will vote on our first four-year mayor if this charter passes. That is also when we'll phase in the school committee changes. There will still be people on there who were elected for four years, and I don't know the wards, and again, this is part of that, that confusion about is it the odds or the evens at that point in time, but some of the people will be finishing off their four-year term, and then they will run um, in 2015 for two years. But there will also be people on the school committee who will be running in 2013 in, by ward for a two-year term. Well, this has been fun. <laughs> talking about best practices, and uh, my memory seems to say that uh, a couple years ago there was a committee for the city that uh, came up with a package of best practices. Yes. The best practices you're referring to are those best practices? Yes. 
we followed those rules of uh, conduct, open meetings, publications. A lot of that was incorporated in the open meeting law that was also passed. So there's, there's um, if you op look into the state MGLs and look under open meeting, um, they delineate what those are. Wendy is our guru. Wendy Maza is our guru on the open meeting laws now. Um, but, but again, those are part of the best practices. Um, city Councilor, uh, then Michael Bardsley, and City Councilor Dave Narkowitz, I believe, co-chaired that best practices committee. They have a report, and we then went ahead and incorporated that. The best practices, I think, those recommendations were sent to Gene and the rest of the City Council um, to incorporate in their codes, their ordinance codes, as part of the practice. And that is sort of where things have evolved at this point in time with that. So they're not in the ordinance code now? I, I don't know that. I don't want to misstate it. I, I would have to check with, with uh, whoever's chairing. Uh, Jesse Adams is chairing the ordinance committee now, and I would check with Jesse. Thank you. I, I also wanted to clarify, that's one aspect of best practices. As we looked at these changes, two-year term for mayor versus four-year term, you can go online and read what are considered best, pa best practices across the country. So that's another aspect. We tried to look at good government best practices, not simply, you know, council best practices. And we, look, we looked at what was happening in Massachusetts and across the country. You know, for a size, uh, Northampton's 30,000 with a mayor at this point in time. Is that the best form of government? Should we be looking at a city manager? So we had that broader discussion, and then we started to focus down on what we sh could accomplish in our given time frame. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Any other comments? I don't want to call it early this time. No. <laughs> Thank you very much to the, to the panel for being here, answering questions. Thank you for, for asking and making comments. They were wonderful. And for you at home, uh, again, I guess I'll repeat the words of Bill Dwight. Don't forget November 6th, second table, second ballot. Uh, Northampton's new charter is, is, is on the ballot. Uh, good luck to everybody. Thank you for coming.